It's time for Windows Weekly, episode 176. Paul Therod is here. Uh, no puppets, but Paul is here, and he's going to talk a little bit about why Eric Schmidt makes him feel all creepy inside, the release of Windows Live Essentials, and a, kind of a review of the Apple uh, TV versus the Roku box. It's all coming up next with Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat, episode 176, recorded September 30th, 2010, complete with felt blood. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Go to Assist Express. If you're in tech support, solve problems fast with the leader in remote support software, Go to Assist Express. For a free 30-day trial, visit gotoassist.com slash windows. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off the lifetime of your new account, go to squarespace.com slash windows and use the offer code windows audible.com to download a free audiobook of your choice go to audible.com slash windows it's time for windows weekly the show that covers everything that happens in redmond washington and environs nearby here to do it for us not to us mr paul Thorat. you know people who are listening to this didn't get to see your little my hand wave hand wave thing there you know the uh Pay no attention to those Androids. Redmond, Washington. Redmond, Washington. Paul Therod is the editor-in-chief of the Super Site for Windows at winsupersite.com. He is news editor for Windows IT Pro. He's the author of many fine tomes, including the Delphi Bible. <laughs> wow. You really like that one. I'm going to send you a copy. In fact, Can you please? I have a Russian, I have a Russian version of the Delphi oh, Super Bible. The Delphi Super Bible. We, yeah. Hey, write all my... All my uh, Malware in the Delphi. <laughs> How many people do you think paid for the Delphi Super Wait a minute. Bible? It is here. The book came. You are fast, Paul Therat. Bring me the book. Look at this. Oh, my God. It's a big book. It's the <laughs> Delphi Super Bible. 800 pounds. Okay. I know what that is, actually. I'm guessing that's not the new Apple TV. It is the, uh, it is the new Apple TV in very, 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 very good packaging for no errors. No, it's the uh, Apple 27. Oh, nice. No, I don't open it now. This is Windows Weekly. <laughs> I actually want one of those. They're well, so expensive. They're, they're $999, so... which, uh, you know, I think for 27 It's expensive. It's a little pricey, although, look, I mean, yes, you can get a 27 Samsung for 300 I could get a 24 inch monitor and a box of cereal. I mean... I know, I know, I know, but is it a good monitor? Is a no, I, I know. No, I, I'm with you. I want one. I just, they're just expensive. They're, they're pricey. But, uh, you know, one of the things I like about it, it has a built-in camera. And you know I like to strip nude and dance around, and so that's good. And it has uh, speakers, and it has the connectors, so you just connect your laptop right up to there if you have an Apple laptop. You do have an Apple laptop. I do, but I would never use that with a monitor. <laughs> or use it in general. I would never use or that. Or wish it on other people. Thank you. Thank you, Paul Therod. This is, Anything after all... Else? What else can I say about Apple? Windows <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> hey, Windows Live Essentials is out. Yes, it is, sir. This is uh, now we've been talking about the beta for ages. This is the the release. Yeah, and I wanted to thank Microsoft publicly for not letting me know that this was happening in advance. I really appreciate that. But they, um, <laughs> <laughs> they released did, the final. Did Steve Ballmer call you up and go surprise, surprise, surprise? No, in fact, let me check my mail because it's been out for mm -hmm. a while now. Yeah, didn't tell and you. Huh? To this minute, I believe, yeah, they wow. still have not alerted anyone about this. So alert the media. <laughs> It's it's out, you know. I wow. Uh, I I didn't have time to do too much with it other than install it and kind of take a look at some of the major apps. I mean, as promised, Windows Live Sync has become Windows Live Mesh, but the UI is exactly the same. And they've upped the SkyDrive storage. Remember that was a a little bit of controversy from two gigabytes to five gigs. Nice. That's but, this is all free. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, the rest of it looks. I mean, again, I haven't done. I haven't, just haven't had time uh, to really dig in there too much, but I don't think it's changed too much from that last, um, the last, you know, pre-release version. The beta. Yeah. 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 
We, and which we downloaded. Everybody who listens to the show knew about and downloaded yeah, and yeah, all that. Yeah. Actually, you know, there is one thing. I, I wonder, let me put Windows Live Writer on because their their blog software, of course. They killed uh, Windows. Uh, the yeah, not a moment too soon, right? Um, <laughs> Windows Live or Windows Live Spaces. The, now, you didn't have to use Spaces with Live Writer. Live Writer worked with other blogs. That's correct. But what they, let me, I want to see how they've done this now. Yeah, it's curious. So if you if you run Windows Live Writer, which is a Windows application, it's part of Windows Live Essentials 2011. The fir fir first thing that you get is what blog service do you use? And now it has changed so that WordPress is the first choice. That's They, they said they were going to push people towards WordPress.com. Yeah, yeah. Hosted and SharePoint, WordPress. which is interesting. They still have Windows Live Spaces listed and then other, and that's everything else. Um, hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, not as different as I thought it was going to be, but they. I just saw a story that said, and I don't know how accurate this is, that only about one percent of people who had uh, spaces moved to WordPress at Microsoft's behest. We're not so, a big, not a big boon for WordPress.com. Well, maybe not yet, but you know, Windows Live Spaces, for whatever it's worth, I don't know if this is still the case, but for a long time there, it was actually the biggest blog service per users. You know, really. Uh, yeah, and I don't think that... But how many blogs were like, the f I wrote one post and now I'm never going to use it again? Exactly right. I don't think a lot of them were very active. I think a lot of people just kind of... Yeah, let me, let me try out. this. Yeah, I, I probably have a Spaces blog. <clears throat> I don't even remember. Yeah, I, yeah. I definitely have at least three. But, yeah. you know, I, I've, I, I'm actually, I'm okay with Spaces. I, the, the concerns I've had with it over the years were, why can't I put this on a custom domain? Uh, which they talked about, you know, because I would consider doing that kind of a thing. But the stuff that made Spaces unique... These special controls they have, the little tie-ins with all the Microsoft services, the little, you know, the, the drag-and-drop ability to manage the layout and all that stuff. It's all gone, right? If you switch to WordPress, you lose all that stuff. Uh, not that WordPress doesn't have some advantages, but it's, a, it's just a different thing. It's a different kind of thing, you know? And I, I just never understood what the point of Spaces was because they, it never really seemed like they were pushing it very hard uh, and, or adding those things because, every, you know, the, the custom domain thing was one of the first things I asked years ago when it debuted as MSN Spaces. And then every time they revved it, I would say, yeah, so are you going to add this or this or this? And yeah, yeah, we're looking at that. And it just seems like it kind of went along every year. So I, I like WordPress quite a bit. I use that mm -hmm. for the Windows Phone Secrets blog. And I, you know, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's a good choice if you, uh, you know, want to do some blogging. This raises that interesting issue that I think... Um it goes back almost to the discussion of portals. Oh. Remember AOL, Yahoo, and to a certain extent Microsoft, Netscape, yeah. all wanted to be everything to everybody. Oh, yeah. And uh, and it turned out that wasn't as good a model as doing one thing well. You know, that uh, it, it turned out if you want to blog, you, you blog with uh, uh, WordPress. Or if you want to, um, you know, if you want to tweet, you tweet with Twitter. You don't. And I'm wondering if this is that portal thing all over again. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a. It's a good point. You know, even Microsoft had come to the conclusion years late that, you know, they had spent uh, probably decades trying to make things all work the same. Remember that one of the big deals with Office was, oh, the toolbars are all the same, you know. So if you if you know one application, it will make it really easy to move on to the next one, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What they discovered doing actual user surveys and, and research and so forth was that people are smarter than that and they were okay with different user interfaces and that actually... Sometimes the different user interface will help a person make the switch to a new type of task so that in this case, you know, the interface for, you know, WordPress looks different than the inter interface for Word because those two things are different, are used for different things. And that actually helps a person make that transition, you know, that the tool is designed for the, the task at hand and is not generic. And, and in many ways, you know, if you look at a lot of what Microsoft's done over the years, they, they spent a lot of time and effort trying to make all this stuff look and work the same. You know, Windows on the PDA and then on the phone, which obviously wasn't such a great idea. Um, so, yeah, I think this is just uh, belatedly them waking up to that fact, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I, you know, it's the same thing with devices where um, I think that has happened where uh, yeah. I didn't want to carry a phone and an iPod and a PDA. So they mushed them all into one thing and that was happy. But on the other hand, you don't really want a TV set with a DVD in it, a DVD player. <laughs> no, in no. It, right? Be right. Because... When you lose one piece, everything goes down, right. I guess. Yeah. I, I think for devices, there's a, there's a line that you cross, and I, we're, we're right there right now where 
the quality of the camera, both for video and still photos, mm. it's a level where it's okay mm -hmm. that this could actually be your camera. Absolutely. Um, we, we crossed a long time ago the, the point where the software inside of a camera to do digital media playback is more than acceptable. In fact, obviously, in the case of an iPhone, it's virtually identical to what you get on an iPod. Uh, it, it, that kind of thing is nice. And, and devices, I think, are a nice fit for that because of the nature of the device. But yeah, with a you know, a TV is not a, a phone, is not a computer. I mean, these things are all different and have different considerations. You wouldn't want your Xbox 360 built into a TV either because that would be the most expensive doorstop in your house, right, if they had been doing this all along. So I think it depends on the... Uh, I guess it I, I think you have to approach everything differently, you know. And if, even, you're if you're carrying something, of course, you don't want to carry it. You don't want to have a, a Batman utility belt. I, I have belt. so much stuff in my pocket sometimes. I mean this seriously. <laughs> really? My shorts actually fall down oh. over time and if i didn't adjust them oh. i would eventually be pantsless yeah you know? no i am frequently it's pantsless. stupid yeah <laughs> right right people will testify here in the office yes, yes. in fact i believe <laughs> they're going to be, be testifying yes <laughs> right. i do recall a conversation with leo <laughs> that trial date is coming up soon as a matter of fact <laughs> uh no yeah so i think that you with a gadget it's okay to combine and 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 you sacrifice you know the, the problem always is if, yeah. if, if it does everything, it does Back nothing perfectly. Digits, yeah. It's like an all-in-one printer or an all-in-one... But, but when you're out in the go, that's okay. It's okay. You put up with so it. You, if you're sitting at a desk with a keyboard, you don't want to be looking at that stupid little screen on, an, on a PDA or a phone or whatever. So similarly, obviously. the idea of combining everything into a big portal mm -hmm. just didn't take off on the web. We, you know, I can go to another page. I don't need to have it all on one page. I think those things were only popular, and I would use the word popular in air quotes, with... Those people who just don't care, you know, the people that never change the default from the browser. Yes. Uh, that kind of thing. You know, Netscape did their Net Center thing for a while. Right. They, well, they thought they had a captive audience. They quickly learned otherwise. Yeah. How's that, how's that working out for those guys? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> we, we have a kept. You'll be ours forever <laughs> at Netscape.com. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, Netscape, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, the smallest part of the AOL empire. <laughs> um Sure. And, you know, Microsoft did it with MSN, uh, which has gone through various permutations over the years. Um, I, I, the people, anyone who would choose such a thing, you have to be suspicious of those people. I mean, I, I don't understand what that is. I mean, I don't even get that, you know, personally. But So with this release, uh, they, they, the, the nomen they were going to get rid of the word mesh, right? They were going to, what happened? Well, they got rid of, so they were going to get rid of mesh, but now they brought it back. So oh, great. what happened was during the beta, they called it Windows Live Sync. Right. Um, the problem for Microsoft is they have a lot of products that have the word sync in them, and they all mean oh. different things. Yes. And I, the people who use Live Mesh, myself included, really liked the product, mm -hmm. liked the name, thought it made sense, and, and so they brought it back. So it's it's confusing because originally there was something called Live Mesh, and then there was something called Windows Live Sync. And in this new Wave 4 release, which became Windows Live Essentials 2011, they were going to call it Windows Live Sync. But now they're calling it Windows Live Mesh, which is a name that actually didn't occur before. And so it's sort of a new name. Let God it's sort them out. <laughs> exactly. I think that's a, actually a direct quote from Steve Ballmer. Uh, <laughs> Let yes. God sort them out. Actually, that would have been a quote from uh, Ray Ozzy, who was the guy that <laughs> yes. green greenlighted the multiple <sighs> products that do the same thing, all with slightly different names. How is Ray uh, doing these days, by the way? Wasn't he going to be the savior of Microsoft? Do you remember at the end of World War II when Hitler was living in a bunker under <laughs> Berlin? It's kind of like that. Yes. <laughs> but, without, but without the killing. Uh, and what I mean by that is not that he's insane, but rather that we just you don't really hear from him that much no. at all. Oh, I mean, you know, there's a, a PDC show coming up in about a month, and maybe we'll hear some, he'll come out and talk some vision, and then we won't hear from him again for a year. I don't know. I mean, I, it seems like he just kind of comes and goes like the wind. I don't it's know. It's really a shame because, I mean, he was the guy, he's the guy who did Lotus. Um, yep. notes. He was the king of groupware, the king of, you know, cloud computing, and it really looked yeah. like when Microsoft hired him and gave him a very important role that he would perhaps bring Microsoft to into the into the cloud. He. Right. And and Ray Ozzy is a tough one because he's obviously a genius, a smart guy. One of the few people who could step into Bill Gates' shoes as, I hate the term, but chief software architect at Microsoft and actually make that work. On the other hand, I, there's been some criticism of Ray Ozzy that this is a guy who has essentially recreated the same exact product every five years, right. wherever he was. And, and there's certainly some... Uh, truth to that and I you know I don't know I mean there was a lot of promise around live mesh 
years ago around the notion of not just syncing documents and you know folders full of information, but also syncing applications mm. over mesh, mm. which is still one of those things that's you can see the technology is sort of there. Why aren't we there yet? We're not sure, but mm -hmm. it seems like you should be able to log onto a PC and and sync with you know some cloud service and have access to your applications, even on a PC that you don't own or a PC that you've never used before. You know, and and wouldn't that be it, cool? Yeah, I think it's going to happen, and 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 something like Live Mesh, if not Live Mesh, is what will make it happen. But it's just interesting that. I think he was trying to foster competition between the various groups inside of Microsoft. And ultimately what happened is years went by and nothing really happened. And what we're left with today with this new version of Windows Live Mesh is something that works a lot like the stuff that, you know, we had two years ago. So neat. Sync. <laughs> you know, here's the new one. So is, uh, is Act, forgive me for my ignorance, is Act, Active yeah. Sync as a name, is that, that's not on the desktop anymore, is it? No, so th there are two Active Syncs in a way. Another confusing Microsoft thing. There's Active Sync, the desktop software that right. was for syncing between PDAs, Windows Mobile based PDAs, and Windows. That's Windows XP and earlier. When Windows Vista came out, they came up with a, a product to succeed that called. Uh, it was called Windows Mobile Device Manager <laughs> or something like that, or Windows I, whatever the heck the name. The Mobile theory device. being, you shouldn't even need to know the name. It should just happen. You plug the thing in, yeah. and it's, it's and it's still, if you have a Windows Mobile device and you plug it into Windows Seven or Windows Vista today, you'll be prompted to install the software. It's still okay. it, it's sort of the new version of Active Sync. There, okay. There's also the Active you know Exchange Active Sync, which is a protocol, uh, which is sort of Microsoft's answer to IMAP, but it works across contacts and calendar Got as well. It. Got it. It's nice that they have the same name because that's not confusing at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sure they gave it that name because in the beginning it was primarily designed to, well, it still is designed to sync with mobile devices. Me Mesh is a great name, and I just just I I'm yep. glad they kept it because frankly, it, it, it you're right. At first, I thought, what does Mesh mean? But no, Mesh makes sense. You're meshing your you're meshing your data from two different sources together. Yep. It's it actually it's like merge. It makes sense. It's a good name for it. Yeah. And uh, so I'm glad they yeah. kept it because that, that says more than sync probably to a lot of people. I think so, yeah. We're going to take a break, come back with more. Paul Therott is here. He is the man at the Supersite for Windows, winsupersite.com, Xbox just, Live update coming. Just the man, I think, would be he enough. He is the man. It's just the man. His review of Roku, the new Roku box coming up, and, uh, and a pot shot at Eric Schmidt also somewhere in the next 45 minutes. Stay right here. You won't want to miss an that, kids. An undeserved. Undeserved pot shot. Why not? <laughs> a pot shot at the greatest man of our generation. Want some ice Coming cream, kids? Come on. <laughs> Turn on the full body scan. This is when you discover that I'm, I was the guy behind that. I knew it. I knew it. Before we go any further, though, I do want to talk to all the support professionals, the software uh, support folks, the people in the audience who are on the phone every day going, click the start button. No, this, no, no, the start button. For you, we have something, something that will make your life so much better. Something that will take you off phone support, will keep you from having to walk down the hall once again to show the guy how to power down the machine. We got something for you called Go to Assist Express from Citrix. I've used this thing since the screensavers days. We actually were using it during calls on the screensavers. It was so cool. And man, when I started using it again a couple of, about a year and a half ago, I just flipped my lid. It's just so great. It's even better than ever. Your clients rely on you, of course, for fast service. You need the best remote access software to get the job done. And there is none better than Go to Assist Express. Don't take my word for it. That's what uh, Frost and Sullivan just said. They're uh, an analyst group that focuses on this uh, particular sector. They said, Go to Assist Express is the worldwide market leader in remote support. They're the number one remote support solution worldwide. It's easy to use. It's affordable. It's secure, 128-bit SSL, so you can use it anywhere. It's cross-platform, Mac or PC. You don't have to have the software on your customers' machines ahead of time. That is, that is actually really nice. When, when you get a support ticket, all you have to do is send them an email or even call them and say, here, here's the website. Go to gotoassist.com, enter in the ticket number, and boom, 30 seconds later, you're fixing their machine. You support them instantly via the web. NAT traversal is automatic. You don't ever have to configure firewalls or DMZ or anything like that. It is, it's so easy to use. And there's features for remote professionals, things like eight simultaneous sessions. So you can start and install, start a scan, keep moving on. Unattended sessions, which is great. You don't have to wait till the client's there, if they give you permission, of course. Um, 
24-7 support from Citrix, of course. I could go on. Oh, uh, you know, you can even, this is, I really like this. I used this the other day. You can drag a file from your computer to the remote support computer. So if you've got malware bytes on your system or a hot fix or whatever, you, you don't have to say, okay, you don't have to go into their browser and download it. You just drag it over. It's so cool. Try it free for 30 days. I know you're going to love this if you're in this business. And if even if you're just your family support professional, they have day passes, which makes it easy for you to, you know, once a month say, okay, it's support day, kids. <laughs> Aunt Judy. Uncle Phil, <laughs> Grandma, Grandpa, Gra Thursday support day. Get your computer on. I'm going to fix it. Here's how you can try it free for 30 days. Go to assist.com slash windows. G-O-T-O, assist.com slash windows. 30 days, unlimited use, free. Give it a try. You're going you're to like this thing. And we thank Citrix for their support of uh, the Windows Weekly program. So you have some uh, Xbox 360 news, I see. Is this Xbox yeah. Live? It's right. I mean, it, yeah, that's how Microsoft is categorizing it. it it's a, it, in November, Microsoft is going to update the Xbox 360. And there are updates to, uh, both to the software that runs on the console as well as to the services that connect to it. So they're calling it Xbox Live Update. But in many ways, this is very similar to last year's update when they that came was huge. up the, the new Xbox experience. That you know? was huge. That was like a whole new machine. Yeah, so there's a bunch of services stuff going on in this new um, update, but also they've they've taken that NXE UI and they've really refined it, and it, it sort of reminds me of the difference between Windows Vista and Windows Seven, where it's clearly kind of the same thing, but they've really looked at it. So the fonts are different; it's flatter. Uh, the color scheme is different. Uh, it's, it's got a nice graphical treatment, and they, they got rid of one of the things I really hated about the NXE, which was that they still have panels, but in, in the original version, the panels visually appear to go off into the distance, and it makes some things really tedious. So, for example, if you're navigating through Netflix and you want to go through your instant queue, for example, I have almost 200 items in there, and you, you scroll through this kind of 3D thing, you know, the panels flip by where each panel is one of the movies or TV shows, and it's just a horrible effect. I mean, it's just it's just cheesy and terrible looking. And they they flattened it, so it actually works a lot like Media Center or the Zoom interface or uh, Windows Phone. Good. So up and down, left and right, and and as with Windows Phone, some some nice uh, font treatments and all that. So to me, that's actually a big part of it. I really like that uh, the new UI. But they've also uh, come through with some of these uh, services they've been talking about for a while. So for example. They've added the Zune music service, which is fantastic. So, and more important, uh, you know, because they previously had a Zune video service, and that's been improved a little bit as well. But they've added that beautiful Zune playback experience, which you get in the PC software and also on the devices, by the way. And now on the Xbox 360, when you're actually playing music through the Zune software, you get that same sort of experience. It's a really, really nice presentation. It's easily the best kind of now playing experience I've seen on any of these players. Really, really, really nice. And it works with Zoom Pass like you'd expect and all that stuff. So that's, that's good stuff. What's missing is any kind of interaction through this service and your account and your home content. So if you have a PC that has your music collection on it and you manage that with Zoom, there is a way in the Xbox 360 to access that library. And it's still there. It's still in the Xbox 360 but you don't access it through that Zune Marketplace service. You do it through the normal media playback, so it's a different interface, which is too bad. So hopefully someday uh, they'll get to that. Um, they've added ESPN3, which I actually like sports, but I, I wasn't too taken with this. It kind of has the quality of YouTube-style you know, web video playback. Um, there are live events, which is somewhat interesting, and then they have some kind of best-of type events from the main ESPN channels. It's okay. Um, and then for Netflix, they've added Search, which is a very big deal. So if yeah. you've used... I think um, that's Netflix doing that, because I noticed they added that on the Roku as well. It must be They're adding it across, yeah, across and it's on the platforms. Apple TV. Yep. And someone told me today it's on the PS3 as well. So I'd mm -hmm. never seen it before on any of the devices I had, but... No, uh, it's it really, they've it's moved from, and I think this is a Netflix strategy, they've moved from, yeah. you do the stuff on the web, and then the, and then you can play it on right, these devices... Right. Uh, to actually letting you choose stuff on the web and I mean on the devices and I think that's and, a, that's and a, even affect your queue you yes know, manage yes add things to the queue so when, when Netflix first appeared on the Roku device if I'm not mistaken the only thing you could do literally was view your instant queue choose that it. was that's it. exactly right and, and, and play content yep um, 
there was no interaction at all with the, the library. I mean, they have whatever number of movies and TV shows available, and you have no way to see them from where you want to see them from, the TV. And uh, they're getting there. You know, one of the things they've added over time, I don't know when this happened exactly, but it's, it's on the 360, it's on the Apple TV, it's, uh, it's on the Roku player, of course, is these sort of related playlists. So as you play and rate things, they'll create a playlist of content, you know, things you may like. So I watch a horror movie or something, it will say, here are some other horror movies you may like, or here are some TV shows that are like 30 Rock or mm, whatever. I love that. Whatever. I use that all the time. In fact, you know what? I don't add stuff to my queue anymore on my Roku. You just I do it that way because you can just stream it. Yeah, you, you don't just start have right there. You, you don't just have to play it. it. Yep. Right. And then, they, of course, they have a recently watched list as well. So if you don't finish, it's easy to find again. Yeah. Um, so that's nice. You know, it, the net, like we, I think we talked about this last week, you know, Netflix has really matured and it has become the one thing of all this stuff for all the devices all the services all the stuff that's out there this is the one thing i think that is at least if you live in the united states that's semi-universal it's starting to appear everywhere you know and it works really really well and it's inexpensive and here it is a, a popular subscription service they said they, they couldn't be done you know and uh, the fact that apple added it uh, to the apple tv to me is, is somewhat amazing so that's a big deal but overall, I think that the, um, you know, the Xbox 360 update, uh, I guess there are various ways you can look at it. But I, I think for me personally, you know, the Zoom music thing is a big deal. And then just the general UI. I'm really glad they refined the UI because mm -hmm. I think it really... It, it Somebody really in the did. chat room said they've added search throughout uh, Xbox. So you can search for Zoom titles as well as uh, uh, Netflix titles. Is it so? It's it's. it's I haven't seen it yet. So it's. I'm cool. not sure if that's new to this update. W one of the problems with my Zoom stuff is I've had access to some Zoom stuff earlier because of the Windows Phone, so I don't know when stuff has been added. So, for example, I've been talking a little bit about how when you buy stuff on Zoom, you can stream it live from Xbox 360, that kind of stuff. I think some of that might have been because I was on the early version of Zoom. So. Um, I'm not sure when things were added. I've, I've had that ability for a while now, but um, yeah, so I'm not actually sure if that's new to this. Well, some of this have to do with Connect. Is it some of it uh, to support? Uh, yeah, and I don't see. I don't have much to say about that because I don't have a Connect. But yeah, there's Connect interfaces in there. Okay. And one so of the like things I could, that, I could move, I could nod my head or go, no, no, no. Yes, yes. Um, possibly. Yeah. So they did some of that in the demos. Actually, it was kind of cool. You could say out loud the name of a song and stuff like that. Right, and when you want to, so you know how Pandora works, you can say I like this or I don't like right. this, you know, Zoom has the same kind of thing. You could actually potentially uh, rate a song that way or I don't want to hear that song again, you know, that kind of thing by shaking your head. Uh, I, I sure. think that's I mean, just so cool. I think that uh, for things like music especially, I think is a good example of this where that sort of natural interface is going to make a lot of sense. You know, I don't think I'm going to spend a lot of time in front of the TV playing connect animals or whatever personally but i could picture using connect combined with the zoom service at say you know you have people over for a party or something and you walk up to the tv and and you know shake your fist at it or something and well, it changes the song, th you know? that's why i i think connect is much more interesting than just a game mm -hmm. interface it could be a new ui in some respects yeah, no, I think the I think this thing has deeper ramifications yeah. than. Well, we've talked about that before. Yeah, that we've seen. November fourth, so right? That's what Amazon says. I'm excited. November four, the, the Connect, Connect bundle. Yeah. Yep. It's a lot of stuff. This is going to be a busy couple of months. Will the you know? uh, Will the Xbox update probably it'll probably come around, around around the same time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it might even be that exact day. It might be. Yeah, sure. That's yeah. yeah. That would be the natural way to do that. Yeah, so it's available in preview now. There was a Microsoft had sent out invites where anybody could sign up to get it early, and I I'm, I would imagine by now it's closed. But uh, they had a limited number of spots for that. So I I had had it earlier for purposes of review, and then when the sign up went out, I I did it on my other Xbox just to get it on the other one as well. Right. And I didn't even notice it happened. I I turned it on. It made a different sound, and you know it's got a new startup screen and everything. It's it's nice. I'm excited. Can't wait. I can't wait. I played with the move. Somebody on oh, Twitter. Yeah, 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 somebody yeah. on Twitter called me an idiot because, <laughs> as I said, I don't like it. Uh, I think it's, it's just weird like, because it's usually a, it's more civil. Yeah. On Twitter. Hey, no, he, well, I'm sorry. It was civil. He said, no offense, you're an idiot. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, which made it okay. It's uh, like, I'm not trying to say you're an idiot per se, 
No offense, but you more on you. No, because I said I, I was unimpressed by moved. I was underwhelmed. It uh, it was like the it was, you know it's just basically a Wii Mote with a, gl with a gl it. glowing yeah. ball okay. at the end of it. And uh, and the games are more adult, but I think the adults don't want to go like this. And then I'm but see I played with Connect and I I loved Connect. It was something about it. I just really loved the idea that my whole body could be used. Anyway, I'm an idiot. No offense. I t none taken. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Paul Thrott. You're such. A... Now you said I was a. I was watching. Uh, I don't know. I was watching the news feeds or something the other day, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I got two two uh, things in a row. Paul Thrott says. Right, hold on a second before you say what you're about to say. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yes. But if this is Paul Thrott says something about Leo, no, is that what it's going to be? No, it's not. No, no, no. If no. it is, you're denying. I can tell it. you right now, it was positive. You were drunk. No, it no, was. It, I, no, I said no, about it, you was, it was Paul Thorat says positive. Windows Phone Seven will come out. I can't remember what you said. October something. Oh, November something. November yeah. something. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, some Windows blog said a completely different yep. date, and right. both both said it's for sure. <laughs> I was like, it's I'm absolutely confused. Absolutely for sure. <laughs> so what Paul Thorat said, Leo? What did that guy say? <laughs> was that Windows Phone Seven would ship, would launch in the United States? Right. On a particular date in yes. November. Yes. That date being November 8th. Right. Well, Paul Thrott also said <laughs> that uh, this October 11th date that everyone's talking about yes. is the date of another event that is unrelated to Windows Phone. Not that Windows Phone might not be part of it, but that is an open house event that Microsoft has every year. It's in New York City and it's in London. Right. They do it for the uh, non-technical press, right? Right. Good housekeeping Popular Mechanics, Playboy, uh, those it. people. That's not they do it because they want to show them what they have for the holidays. Yeah, okay. They do it every year. That's that's that October 11th date. Now, other people have been talking about October 25th, perhaps. For, I've seen uh, that day Europe. as well, yeah, but that's Europe. Yeah, I, I know nothing of that. I'm okay. not saying it's true or not. I don't know. What I'm saying is, based on my source, who I trust very much, uh, that the launch date in the U.S. is November 8th. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Because Leo Laporte. Whatever I said about confused. Leo is don't, you don't listen to that. <laughs> I didn't see anything. So they're oh. very, you're not making this up? There's like something I should be looking for? No, I thought the way you were saying it. No, I thought, no, 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 no. I was, oh. I was confused. I saw two different dates. But now you've clarified, and I think you've clarified accurately. And, are, and you stand by this November 8th. Yeah. And November 4th, it actually makes sense because uh, November 4th, 4th is probably the connect, yeah. For connect. And that's not such a big announcement because we know all about that. Windows Phone is kind of a big announcement because we do. There are still details. I have no idea why they're being cagey about these dates. They should just announce it. You know what? What we discovered when uh, we're not shipping on Verizon at the last second is when you hold information in like that, right. it, it never works out well at the end. Right. You know, just just say what you're doing and and move along. Well, Apple right, doesn't. Apple Apple. Apple doesn't tell you, right? They just. Um, oh, but Apple will, you know, s send a little feed, you know, feeler type thing. So they'll be like, "Hey, we're going to have a an event." They say there's an event, but they don't say what it's yeah. about. Oh, but then because they get more press. Up. Yeah. Right. They they manipulate us. No, it, their their event will say something like, "We've done it again." Find right. out why on September yeah, exactly. 11th. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> After September 11th, nothing will ever be the same again. Or not? I wouldn't shouldn't have said September. Yeah. November 11th. <laughs> No, I, yes, uh, can we certain. edit that? I'm so sorry. I, I, yeah. uh, I said I said it first. So. Suck. Thank you. <laughs> uh, moving right along to the next story, ladies and gentlemen, the Roku Player versus Apple TV. It's a fight to the finish. Now the Apple yes. TV is shipping. In fact, I know people who have got theirs. I have mine. I'll show it to you. Oh, I'd love to see it. I haven't got mine yet, but I I ordered later than others. I still have it plugged in, so I got to. Oh, it's teeny weeny. Yeah. And actually, you know, the the Roku player is very small as well, but this thing makes the Roku player look like a pig. But when the, you compare you have the it to new, the, old, the new Roku XDS or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. that's the one I have. see if I can get Functionality in the new Roku is very similar to the uh, the old one, but there's the potential down the road for more. This is the old Apple TV versus the new, right? I mean, it's... A uh, big difference there, yeah. yeah but there's no difference. storage. It's just there, a... Yeah, there's, there's a, actually, there's eight gigs of storage. But you don't have the oh, opportunity to explicitly target it. You can't that's a buffer. sync with it. It's all streaming, which, yeah. you know, if you're used to Apple TV and you like Apple TV, like I do, 
that is a little disappointing, mm -hmm. right? Because they've taken something that was whole and they've stripped away <laughs> some of the stuff that was actually kind of mm -hmm. cool about it. And they've turned it into a streaming only device. Now that said, if you use a Roku box. That's a streaming only device. It's a streaming only device. If you uh, access Netflix from any device, an Xbox 360, PS3, Roku, Play, or whatever, streaming. And my experiences with that stuff have always been generally very positive, actually. See, that's not my case. Uh, I get buffering once in a while, and that's why I like the Apple TV, because I could put stuff on the hard drive and know it would play back yeah. solid. So I would, I would urge you to at least test this on the new Apple TV, because I think what they've done is they've put enough storage in there. And by the way, some of that might be for apps but, uh, oh. as well. I think that's... Uh, a pretty obvious possibility but they have a lot of storage on there and i think they're using it right now for caching you get you're right <laughs> you made my head swell well I, why would they have eight gigs why do you need eight gigs of storage you don't need that for caching i mean that's right you're right eight gigs would be enough for some good apps i mean how many apps could you have on no there? that's Two. plenty that's a mall i don't have eight gigs yeah. on my uh, iphone no of apps no that's what i mean so eight gigs is a lot so i think eight, you know apps plus Cash well, you know, and an interesting thing happened uh, this week, mm -hmm. which is Hulu Plus announced it was going to be available on yeah, the Roku. Right. Actually, I should say, you know. And that's um, the app I wanted on, uh, on an Apple TV. I actually have early access on the Roku to YouTube and USB playback. And uh, they're not bad. Uh, the, the USB playback on the Roku is a little slow. You mean, what does that but mean? Not, From a USB hard drive? Yeah, you can plug a USB. If you have the, I think it's only the top end version has a USB port on it. Yeah. Plug in a hard drive, whatever content's on there. It works great with NTFS, which, by the way, the 360 does not. And really? You know, you, yeah. <laughs> Don't get me started, please. But really? it's a little slow. And that, that's what I found on the Roku player is that it's a little slow. Uh, the advantage of the Roku player is that it has access to a bunch of services and more are coming. Like I know. You said, I like, love it. Like Lou and, and YouTube. I can watch news on it now. Of course, you can watch us on it now. Yep, um, yep. There's, I, I, I really love no, it's my a pretty, Roku box. It's a pretty impressive collection. When I missed Glee, because I think that there is a, <laughs> is a do not record. What are you laughing at? I, I, You're laughing at miss, me. Missing Glee is an oxymoron of sorts, but please continue. I'm a Gleek. I, I, it's okay. When I, <laughs> I saw that look. It's okay. I saw that I fleeting think, I think thought. I a little go less of you, but it's not much. <laughs> well, what the, he's, I have Glee on my DVR, but it never records. Twice an hour, it hasn't recorded. I missed the Britney Spears episode. Maybe and, someone is trying to help you, Leo. <laughs> Maybe my wife <laughs> yeah. is secretly erasing it. So I, but I freaked that thought. Well, first of all, somebody's told me that there is a, a do not record flag being set. This is the first time I've ever experienced that being set. But apparently, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But okay. for whatever reason, even though it's on my recordings, it does not record. However, uh, I, you know, you can get it on Amazon or Apple. Right. And uh, so, I, you know, now... I, on Apple, which would work with the Apple TV or I guess, you know, your your iPhone and your other Apple devices, you can you can buy an episode for a buck yes. ninety nine or it's fifty seven ninety nine for the whole season. On or you can rent now on the Apple TV. Yeah, rent. Or on, on the only, AM well actually so Glee, what's what network is that on? Do you even know? Isn't that funny? I have no idea. I don't even know what channel like, it's we don't, on. No, no, it's Fox, of course, I think, we don't think right? of these terms Fox is on there. So that's one of the problems with the Apple TV rental thing is that there's only really right. two stations. It's Fox and ABC. So you can't get Glee on both. So this is a good apples to apples comparison. On Amazon, yep. it's cheaper. You buy you buy a you season buy pass, but you only buy one episode at a time. If you decide, I hate this show, you cancel yep. it. You don't have to commit ahead of time to fifty seven ninety nine. dollars right. And well, it's so, cheaper, too. So, I mean, I just, and it's on my Roku. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. I, I think App or Amazon rather is in a, a spot to do this because you know they're not even close to being the market leader, right? So they need to offer something that's boy, boy they're my market leader. I just you know yeah. there was just no brainer for me. Yep. Plus, I have and that two content will follow you around. By the way, so when you, exactly. once you buy something on Amazon, if you were to uh, it's in get my a new library. Roku box two years down the road, exactly. you could stream it live from Amazon. That's right. Because you own it. That's yeah, right. No yeah. That's so, nice. and I have two Roku boxes. I can watch it in the bedroom or the living room. I mean, it, it just, it's yeah. so much better. Right. The only thing I'm waiting about, I, I, I mean, I've already written off the Apple TV. I ordered it. We'll see. Uh, well, I would say, so let me just say a few things in say defense. Say some things in its defense. Um, 
it only it, it has Netflix, which is not you know every everyone has Netflix. I, I would say that the performance on the Apple is actually a little bit better. It's probably an A4 they, they, chip in there, right? I know it's only 720p, whatever, but honestly, the video quality I've seen on there has been excellent. The performance is better across the board, just from a streaming perspective. You know, the Roku I find to be very slow. Um, and that might be it. <laughs> Let me think. Yeah, that it's might, hard that to come up with a lot bit. of things because it's at, it's iTunes and, and yeah. Netflix. And it, right. And it still does that dumb thing where you can connect. They don't use the uh, the old interface where you type in the code and sort of uh, connect it to the machine anymore. It's just it uses the iTunes home networking feature. Oh, that's home interesting. Sharing. So there's no and there's no connection to anything. You know, when you. If you connect to a, a mobile me account so you can display photos or you connect to a Flickr account so you can display photos, there's no sense that this is your Flickr account or your mobile me account and thus you have to type in some password. All you can connect to are public stuff. So if you have the name of the account, you can get into anything they have publicly available, whether it's yours or someone else's. There's no connection between this box and anything. It's just, it's completely disconnected. And it's... You know, again, if you're used to the Apple TV, it's a little tough because the original one was so much more powerful. But on the other hand, what this really competes with are the Roku player and the WD TV series of players. Um, you know, the Xbox 360 connected services stuff as well. And I, I think on that level, it's it's okay. I think it's it's the Apple ecosystem, which is huge for some people, you know, like it or not. It just is. Plus Netflix, essentially. And then some photo stuff like uh, Mobile Me and, and Flickr. And that's about it. You know, the, the Roku box, the Roku stuff is very extensible, and they're always adding stuff. And that's actually always, kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, just simple pricing thing. Amazon's 99 cents to own. Apple's 99 cents to rent. And, a, and I think it's it's either buck ninety or two ninety nine to own. So it's just... It's and it's only... They only are... They they only have choices. And you can't, you can't buy anything from the Apple TV anymore. You know, if you... If you wanted to buy, uh, let's say, you know, the new Robin Hood movie, uh, and I want to buy it and download it to my computer, but watch it on the Apple TV, you could do that, but you have to do it from the the computer. Yeah. You know, you can't initiate anything from the from the play the Apple TV other than playback of rented content. Or, or I'm sorry, you can trigger a rental that will play on that thing because it streams, and that's it. You know that you're that's, you know, there's no sense of. That, that content is never going back to your computer and then from there out to any other device. If you want to do that, you have to do it from the computer now. And it's, you know, it's too bad. So your, your winner? There's no winner yet because I, I think we have more. We got to see Google. To look at. I'm, there's Google TV coming. There's uh, the WD TV, the new one, um, which I have an older version of, so I ordered a new one of those. There's the Xbox 360, which with this software update we just talked about, I think is a credible competitor for the living room, especially when you factor in, this, in the fact that it does video games and those Kinect games coming in November. So I think these are all things we have to look at, and obviously everyone's needs are different. I can't say that, you know, it depends on your needs. If you're heavily invested in the Apple ecosystem, your decision was already made for you. If you're not, you know, the Roku stuff is very interesting. I am totally intrigued by uh, what Xbox 360 might become. I, yeah, I mean, too. I've ordered I one of those. Some of the hard drive stuff, but yeah, yeah. But you can stream over the network. That works very well. I, I want them to consolidate their interfaces for mid media playback. You know, uh, one of the things I've been complaining about for years is this lousy interface they have for playing music and photo uh, slideshows and movies. It's just terrible and antiquated, and it's been there forever. It was there from the previous UI. It made its way into the new UI unchanged. It's still there in this version, you know. They have this beautiful Zune player software. Uh, it's available for Zune Pass content now. You know, but it's like they do things in these little baby steps. You know, let's let's make it happen. Yeah. Uh, it's fair. I, I love it. I have to say, I mean, it sounds like I'm bitching and moaning, and I love it that we have the choice. I love it that this is the conversation that we're having. Um, it really means it is, it is, there are many interesting different ways to watch content, to consume content, and listen to music and so forth. And I think that's exciting. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's all good. Yeah, no, it's, it's all coming together. I think, you know, the people who jumped on the, you know, the Roku bandwagon early on or the Apple TV stuff early on were kind of ahead of the game a little. And, and it's, and there's still arguments going on. You know, there's a story in the paper today, I think it was the guy from Time Warner saying this 99 cent rental thing on iTunes devalues our content. 
And, you know, we don't think this is a good idea. Right. I mean, it's still, we're still kind of in the throes of this. I don't, you know, it would be really interesting if the rental thing failed. Um, actually, let me look at this thing. I think it has a USB port. I mean, I suppose, actually, it doesn't. So I, which, how, which how thing? Gonna, the uh, Apple thing? The Apple TV. I mean, no, that's, like, that's, that's need, it. That's what it does. You can't, yeah, you couldn't even add storage to this if you had no, to. No. So, I mean, what happens if they come out with this thing and then it has to be orphaned? It would, you know, nothing. That's at, welcome to the Apple world. We don't <laughs> orphans. We got lots of them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. What do you want? Upgrades? <laughs> Compatibility? <laughs> what? What are you asking? Right, right, right. You paid 99 bucks for the thing. That's a good, right? That's cheap. It's That's cheap. Uh, it's cheap. But it is it's interesting. I mean, it, it's a it's, dead it's, end. It's, yeah, it's very cute. Yeah. It's very cute. Be, be a nice air hockey puck. <laughs> you know? Just hit it around the table. Yes, it would. Uh, let's see. Do you want to talk? Okay, we're going to talk. I want to talk about uh, Eric Schmidt. But before we do that, I want to mention Squarespace because I think there's probably a lot of Windows Live spaces, folks, looking for a replacement. Mm -hmm. And I know Microsoft's pushing you to WordPress, but I got something better for you than WordPress.com. Uh, now, the advantage of WordPress.com is like spaces, it's free. And they put their ads on it and stuff like that. If you want a pro site, a site that really looks great, is does not look like a WordPress site. You know, one of the problems with a lot of blogging platforms uh, or web platforms in general, you know, remember, and I think there's still ISPs that do this. Well, you know, go to ISP XYZ and uh, build your own site with our great uh, site builder software, and, <laughs> and which is what they call it. And it all looks exactly the same. You know, it's just, I mean, it's like you could tell immediately. Oh, that's great. Joe's Plumbing. They really put some effort into that one, didn't they? This is what I like about Squarespace. You go to squarespace.com right now. Use the promo code Windows. By the way, you could try it for free. So you, 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 everything I'm saying, you can verify for your very own self. They've got such incredible templates, but that's just the starting point. Once you, once you, once you, you know, pick the template, then you have absolute control over what it looks like by drag and drop. By, by, you could change widths by dragging. I mean, it's so slick. So if you look at the examples that Squarespace offers at squarespace.com, you'll see every site just looks different. And none of them look cookie cutter. Each one has, here's a, uh, here's a doctor, uh, you know, doctor's office, pediatrics. Isn't that beautiful? It's just really great. And here's the other thing. It's, once you set it up, it's very easy to add content to. They have a nice iPhone app. There's great web interface for it. Um, here's a comic uh, book, Valiant Entertainment. Um, the, now, the Flash, of course, is just Flash, but, but the point is I guess you can, you can do anything you want here. This is a Squarespace site, too. Go to squarespace.com. Take a look. You can import your existing blog stuff in. It supports uh, all the, uh, all the you know, standards, the API standards, and export it so you're never stuck. Great stats. Beautiful photo galleries, form building. It is fantastic. This is where exceptional sites begin. Try it free for 14 days. You don't even need a credit card. Go to squarespace.com slash windows. And if you decide to buy, it, it starts at $12 a month. But if you decide to buy, if you use the promo code windows when you check out, you'll get 10% uh, off each and every month for the life of your site. Squarespace. It's simply the best code for the best design. We use it for our Inside Twit blog. I'm moving my ra my radio site over to it. It's just great. Squarespace.com slash Windows. We thank them for their support of Windows Weekly. Paul Therott is here. He is the, the guy behind the super site for Windows at winsupersite.com. So what is it? What is your beef with the Schmidtmeister? <laughs> Mr. Eric I, I Schmidt. I think he might be insane. He's a little odd. In fact, I posited in an article this week that he might, in fact, be a robot sent to Earth <laughs> to get Skynet going, like in the Terminator movies. Do mm. you think he's from the future? No, come on. I, I, really? I've heard of less ludicrous things in my life, you know. <laughs> There's something wrong with him. Okay, give me an example. Well... <laughs> Not that you know, there aren't many to choose from. <laughs> Actually, I'll, I'll speak in a generality uh, because, you know, he's, he's come up with some crazy stuff over the year, over the weeks, months, whatever. Yeah. You know, there was some... Uh, he gets misquoted good... a lot. Did you see him on Colbert? No, I, that, that I would like to see. I think, he, uh, I think he gets misquoted. You know, he was talking okay. about the fact that, um, 
well, he's well. Go ahead. I, I just think he's got this kind of a gee whiz quality where he completely negates the necessity for these privacy right. controls. Exactly. And Google, you know, like I, I think I said this last week or the week before. I mean, I, I really do feel like they're cheating to get ahead. And that, you know, Facebook does the same thing, which is we're going to completely violate everyone's privacy, but we're going to build and build and build. And then when we finally have some mass number of customers, we can say, okay, well, now we'll fix it, you know. And I think that for all of the junk about Microsoft, you know, 10 years ago, and they had the, uh, the antitrust problems with the U.S. government and all that stuff, you know, don't you think that the stuff that Google does has a much wider ramification for everybody than Microsoft and the PC world. I mean, it, it, I just feel like this is crossing some line, you know, and I'm, I'm just concerned. I, I, and I think the concern is just these are smart guys. You know, the guys that found a Google are smart. Eric Schmidt is a smart guy. And they're so clueless mm. about things to me that are just basic and common sense. And I, I'm, I'm concerned about it. You know, I'm, I'm the, the, I wish he, he should talk less. Because yeah. the more he talks, the more concerned I get. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, on the one hand, I like it that he just kind of talks. Like, he's not... <laughs> he's just... Yeah. No, most CEOs, I, I know, though, like, are very cautious. Of, you know, well, right, but see, he says things and then the world changes. Yeah. You no, know? No, he's powerful. Um, it's scary. I, I, I'm, I'm scared by this guy. Right. I don't feel that he was particular particularly successful at his previous ventures. He certainly did nothing to... We said Novell, right? Uh, Novell and also at Sun Microsystems, right? Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, it's kind of a two strikes and, you know, mm. <laughs> you're down there. But now, you know, but now he's running this, you know, one of the most powerful companies in the world, uh, one of the most powerful tech companies in the world, sort of, right? I mean, I, I also wonder if, I mean, is he really driving the ship here? I mean, I, I, you have to wonder if he's not on a stick and they're holding him up, you know, <laughs> Like one of those Russian leaders after he died. And he does kind of look that a little stiff like a puppet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. This guy just makes me nervous. And it's, by the way, it's not like a, I, I get that Google competes with Microsoft and, you know, it's nothing like that. I mean, he just gives me a vibe. There's something. Well, you're not alone. I mean, I think that there, there's a lot of people, are kind of really a lot of people concerned about. Uh, right. Well, you re you referenced that. The I don't know what it, it's a little. No, the. The skit where, you know, you want some ice cream, yeah, kid? Yeah. Well, we know uh, that now. We know that was a, a hit piece. Right. But just like the thing where the guy uses Google to stalk his girlfriend in that, you know, movie from the future or whatever. Right. We, we can recognize those things for what they are. And yet we also see a little bit of truth there, and which is what makes it awful. Right. I mean, the reason that that is so awful in a way isn't because someone did a hit job on him. It's because... You can kind of buy it, <laughs> you yeah. know. You almost—it's uh, believable. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think this is a company that regulators from around the world need to look at and really need to think about because they're controlling the information pipeline for huge portions of the population. And I—I just—I don't know. They're not just making PCs here, you know. They're not selling little phones. They're—they're they're kind of doing everything. Right. You know, it's—it's it's scary. I don't know. I don't trust him, Leo. <laughs> well, I on the one hand, I, 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 I sympathize and I understand your feeling, and yeah. I certainly see people uh, feel the same way, and sometimes I get that queasy feeling too, but I right. mean, other, other, but it's just innuendo. I mean, it's not like, I mean, if you can... If well, you, yeah, but you know... Just getting a bad <laughs> feeling about a guy, I mean... It's like saying, I had a bad feeling about that Hitler guy, but that worked well, out okay. Yeah, but, yeah, but, 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 <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, you, you want... Has uh, he done anything is the question that, that really merits your done fear. anything yet would be my question. But yeah, yeah okay. Okay, yet. I don't, I don't know. know. I just don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> Consider yourself warned, Eric. That's right. I do not trust you. I mean, come on, Steve Ballmer. Come on. You think he's normal? <laughs> well, do I think he's normal? I look at Meg Whitman and I think Oompa Loompa. I don't know what oh, the... Oh, goodness. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think know. CEOs sometimes are, like, strange. I remember our CEO at Tech TV. He, <laughs> once he walked I, I up... Think... He was really weird. Once he walked up to our program director and said, you know, Leo's kind of a good-looking guy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> well, I, I read a number of books recently about the car industry, and one of the things that struck me that I think is relevant here is it, these guys become CEOs of companies, huge companies, you know, very powerful companies, control billions and billions of dollars, and they they move markets and they cause you know the the health of the United States as a whole to go up or down because of their actions. Yeah. And then you realize they're just guys like us, you know, through some bizarre set of circumstances. You know, I make minimum wage and he's running GM or something. But, you know, the guy has insecurities and he has problems and he's, yeah, you know, they're normal people and they're, something they're, and they're under just the spotlight. People. Yeah. And. But Eric's not a person. I'm telling you, the guy's a, <laughs> <laughs> there's something wrong there. I'm going to you're going to peel his face away. And it's going to be like Westworld. No, I know. I, I know what you're saying. Now, my CEO just walked in. She's completely normal in every respect. Oh, what's that? Gary brought an Apple TV. <laughs> That's all right. We've already seen one. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Paul has one. Oh, he's got one? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bring it in here. I'll, I'll hold it up on this side. Now you'll see what on, okay. on both sides of the camera. We but can, this one's not have, attached. You could have them kiss. This is, this is you understand, Windows <laughs> Weekly, Gary. I understand. Yeah. About yeah. Well, we're, we're talking about it. Here. There it is. Yeah, there's the there's the Apple TV in a box. Yep. Yeah, it's small. You know, it is small. I mean, that, that box is like it's like an iPod came in a box. It's almost too small. You know, when you're looking for stereo equipment, you want thing, more it size. Just doesn't, it doesn't really fit. I mean, it's small. I mean, it's it's almost not big enough. You know, it, it's almost like they had to cut down on the number of connectors because it was so small. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they want Apple even said it's HDMI and that's it. TV you know? should be simple. It should. I I agree yeah. completely. We don't want to put a and, and, you know, who they're competing against is Google and Google TV when that comes out, which will not, you know, of course, be simple. So you you know what else this thing has in it is that copy protection scheme, right? Which I only know about because I I had it out in my den, and I was writing about it. In fact, I I'll probably post my review after we fi we're finished here, but. I wanted to get the display in here with the remote so I could look at it. So I ran a, an extension uh, HDMI cable into, the, into a screen in my office. And I have this little connector piece that you can connect HDMI with. It doesn't affect the picture quality at all. It's fantastic. Except that now this thing doesn't meet that HD. Oh, it is, the HDCP. HDCP. Yeah. Right. And so, it actually, you so if you try to play any content That's on right. it, it will say, except unless it's a podcast, it will say, no, you can't do that. Um, this is not an HDCP compliance That's display right. connection. Yeah. That's right. Microsoft got into all that trouble for that. Where where are the people complaining about Apple? Mm. Hey, exactly. let's uh, let, as long as we're uh, as long as we're talking here. Mm -hmm. What about Apple competitors? What about the uh, the BlackBerry? Uh, what what do they call that? The black the, the playbook. playbook? Now I got yeah. one thing I got to say, and you know everybody's talking as if it's a real thing. It's not a real thing. I, I know, I know. They said sometime in 2011. That could be a year from now. Oh yeah. There's nothing physical. It, it it's a great idea. Exist. It reminds me a little of that Microsoft Courier. It's just like mm, that looks nice. Yeah. Let me know when I can buy that. Well, except they announced they announced it. So I mean, their intention is to build it. Well. So this is a company that has a smartphone OS. I intend not, to be a billionaire, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I like I the, know. I mean, I, all the specs are great, the, right? I mean, yeah, the specs look great. The the size is right. I, I, you you, you know, like seven inches. You think that's a good size. <laughs> yeah, and this is based large on the fact that having carded around an iPad, I, I find it to be a little too big. Um, but seven seems like a good size. The streak is so. five, right? The current one is, but they're going to come up with a seven-inch streak as well. I don't know. You know, I, I'm not sure we need yet another system. Uh, as much as I would complain about Apple, you know, reusing iOS and not really changing it enough for the iPad, at least they didn't come up with a completely different thing, right? I mean, so do we really need yet another? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, know. I don't mind seeing the competition at all. You know, we well, got no, a couple of BlackBerry guys in here. How do you feel about the fact that it's using Cunix, not the BlackBerry OS? That's oh, they're happy. <laughs> they don't. Yeah. They think BlackBerry OS wouldn't be the right way to go with this. I guess that's probably true. The BlackBerry OS is not designed. Oh no, I'm it not doesn't even have multi-touch. Right, but uh, you know, maybe part of this. Oh, I guess. Uh, I guess the storm does. Huh? We are re-architecting uh, BlackBerry OS. It's all going to be the same code base. There'll be some form of app interoperability as there is in iOS. This 
playbook thing will be part of that. Yeah, in fact, you'll bond think, it. You'll bond it to a BlackBerry. Yeah, I mean that's how you get this the, is the same G. problem that HP is going to have with this WebOS thing, which is okay. So they're coming out with WebOS. Okay, <laughs> you know it's like another thing. I, I I I think we're starting to rally around a couple of different standards or whatever, and I, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like there's too much of this. I, I think we're gonna. There's gonna be some pushback, but and I think I wonder if there's any business case for a tablet type device, and 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 the, also in the first version, it's a a connectivity thing. You know, you're going to be connecting the device, you know, your BlackBerry phone to this device and use it as a screen. Which isn't that what that Palm Folio thing was that they never came out with? Um, wasn't right. that the plan for that? Right. You know, Palm might be kicking itself. Right. Well, they're. <laughs> or gone, but I sure. wondered when the uh, iPad came out if Palm, if the Palm folks say, "No, oh, geez, maybe that yeah, maybe that folio wasn't such a bad idea after all." Well, but the iPad's a standalone computing device. You know, the folio. Right. Yeah, you know, it's like the um, I forget the name of it. There was a there is still probably a company that makes this thing that will blast out Windows Mobile to a larger screen. And okay, but I mean, I, it's just another thing. I, I don't I don't know. I will see. I, obviously, competition is good for everybody. Um, does uh, yet another OS made by BlackBerry make more sense than a Windows 7 tablet? I don't, we'll see. I guess we'll find out. You know, can Apple make the iPad more acceptable for businesses? Right. Um, probably. So certainly there's been some interest there. Well, there's one and a half million hits on the YouTube video of the... Uh Playbook. One and a half million yeah. hits in about two days, three days. That's pretty good. Yeah, half of them are probably from Cupertino. <laughs> yeah, what is this? What does it do? And it really, the video is all concept. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, sure. in fact, if you look at it, you don't even see a device until the very end. It's all, look at the pretty pictures. They must have just announced this now because of this event they're having. They wanted to have something that was a splash. Well, it just you really contrast this to Apple, which won't say a word until they've got a product they can hold up and then give you a ship date and... Yeah, you know, it's it's almost saying it's to me. It sounds like it's almost saying, well, whatever you do, uh, don't worry about the new uh, iPad tablet because uh, we're going to have something. Yeah, it's it's fud. It seems like fud. It seems like you know, it is fud. Yeah, that's the definition. Yeah, fear, no, I'm uncertainty. Not, uh, who knows? Maybe it'll be good. I, <laughs> you know, it looks great. It they'll, they'll surprise us. It looks great, but it's just a video. Yeah. It's a great concept. It's got a front-facing uh, camera. Got a right. back-facing high ca high yep. def camera. It's got it, it. You know, it's it's a nice. I bet Microsoft made a, an ad just like this for origami. Yeah, exactly. But they know they and did. You, I remember seeing it. You, yeah, and then you get the thing in real life, and you're like, Ew, Ew. What ultimate. What was it? The UMPC, Ultra Mobile PC. Yeah, that's the problem. Is we've seen the form factor alone is not enough. Obviously, we've seen tablets for years. Yep. It's more than the form factor. It's something. I don't know what. Yeah, this is the thing, you know, I get into this mini argument with people that, you know, I, t I complain about these Windows 7 tablets. Why are we doing this again? We already did this. And, right. you know, people say, you don't understand. There's a market for this. And I said, I do understand. <laughs> We've been selling these things for years. No one's ever bought one. <laughs> but you see an iPad now and you're getting excited about well, that's tablets? what happens. There's a little iPad jealousy. It strikes me. I, I, I don't know. I don't think anything's changed. Somebody's saying in the chat room, uh, without an app store, you're you're you got nothing. Is that? Do you think that's the case? That's the that's the, the, the that's one of the distinctions. I actually just wrote an article about this. You know, to be considered a modern smartphone platform, I think there are things you need to have, and one of those things absolutely is a not just an app store, but an app store that is robust and has content in it and has a way that developers can easily, uh, you know, submit their applications and monetize them if they want to. And get them out to users. I mean, that's absolutely part of it. Right. BlackBerry obviously has that stuff. So, do you think the uh, Windows Phone Seven will? I mean, you think that's going to be? It absolutely a big... will. That's yeah. going to be one of the strongest things about Windows Phone Seven. Yeah, gotta have that. Yep, gotta have that. Time to uh, take some questions from the chat room. We do the show live every uh, Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. And uh, if you want interested to... in questions about Call of Duty, I have some good tips. <laughs> with regards to certain challenges. So uh, we actually have some people in the chat room who are BlackBerry folks. Yep. Uh, so uh, they have a question for you. Actually, it's uh, Isaac Kendall of CrackBerry.com. <laughs> he is a BlackBerry developer. He's here for mm -hmm. the BlackBerry Developers Conference. He says, is Windows, will Mesh, uh, the new Mesh run on the uh, Windows home server? That's a good question. I haven't tested that yet. Um, I would hope so. You know, 
one of the big deals, like we've said a few times on the new home server, is the extensibility stuff and how they're pushing that. And um, I think we'll have to wait and see. But just about a month from now, we're going to have a meeting with Microsoft and finally get to see some of those add-ons. So I'm going to I'll see which, which ones Microsoft comes up with. So Calgary Guru says, look carefully on your Apple TV. There yeah. is a mini USB you know, port on it. I was wondering that. Actually, he's right. Oh, okay, good. It's Correction. I, I thought I saw one. Okay. It's yep. a it's a mini port. Now, my understanding is that for today, yeah, because now, okay, yeah, it is. It's hidden under there, so it's very small, and I think it's designed for some form of uh, PC connectivity where you have to maybe reset the thing or. But yeah, okay, that that would be a way to add add storage. So that that's good. Win Longhorn, aptly named, asks, "Have you heard the rumor that Microsoft might be buying Second Life?" Uh, yeah, I, so someone sent me that via email. Why would be I don't know. Yeah, my I question. Don't know. Maybe it'd be somewhere there. Eric and uh, and and Steve could hang out together. <laughs> right. Will uh, older games work with Connect? Now I'll, I can give you an example with uh, the PlayStation Three. They are uh, updating existing games to work with Move. There's a you know right. some of these games will have patches. They don't work as well as if they were designed to use the, the Move controllers, <laughs> but they can. And so I would suspect that. Uh, no, the problem is the no. Microsoft Connect is really a full body thing. Yeah, that, no, it's they're different things. They're not. It's not. Gonna so work it's not going to happen. It's possible that in the future we'll see games that will work either way. I guess, but uh, you know, they'd have to add that support explicitly to games. I don't see that happening. And uh, somebody wants to know what you're going to do another everything must go anytime uh, soon. I'm, listen, I'm so overdue on this, and I'm freaking because I am wallowing in devices and stuff and i really do want to get rid of it the, the problem with everything to go is it's really hard and time consuming and awful and i love getting rid of stuff but it's just such an awful process so i've been obviously been meaning to do this forever and i mean i have ipods and zunes and all these st stupid living room devices and i got all kinds of stuff and i, I really do want to do it soon but i i don't i don't have a date yet i'm sorry <laughs> you do have crap you just haven't figured out. It's this. not. Some of it's this. Listen, this is stuff that needs a home. You know, there's no doubt this would be useful to people. Yeah. I, I feel bad about it. Yeah. Uh, just running through uh, all of the. Uh, he says, w "Why do you love a Call of Duty: uh, Modern Warfare when it has such uh, so poor multiplayer features? Do you consider it a poor multiplayer game? No, I think it's the superior multiplayer there game. There you go. I, I, I don't know why people play anything else. <laughs> Actually, no. I don't know why we do anything else. He says, "If I could somehow uh, derive sustenance from this game, I would just play it twenty four seven." <laughs> oh, hey, we should correct ourselves, and I and I'm glad Shishank yes. Shank brought yes. this up. We uh, we last week we had a, a, a spokesperson from a Microsoft uh, on. He no longer works there. He's been fired because <laughs> yeah. he yeah. he lied. No, I'm not saying Brandon's still there. Brandon Watson was at great pains to say he misspoke when he was on the show last week. There is not there is no tethering in Windows Phone Seven. So right correction. Yeah, he said that, and I, I actually th I thought, geez, you know, that's not what I wrote. <laughs> I'm going to have to rewrite the book. It's not what they told me. And, uh, yeah, it turns out, yeah, it's not true. So just the, the, init the initial shipping version of Windows Phone will not have tethering, but obviously that's on the to-do list, and it will happen over time. That's, I mean, if you look how long it took the iPhone, it took almost four years. Yeah, um, I'm hoping it's faster than that. Yeah. But, yeah, it won't be there right away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's one, you know, look, uh, it's something that the carriers also have to agree to, and that's, boy, that's a nightmare have to work that out right yeah that's been a nightmare on the iphone that's for sure yeah yeah uh, My, uh the android phone i have has tethering and um i haven't i haven't had a chance to test it other than to see that it works but to actually bring it out in the world and try it i'm gonna i'm gonna have to do that soon i'm just looking at the questions here if you have a question you can go to our chat room irc.twit.tv during the live broadcast it'd be kind of futile to do it after the fact if you're listening on a on a on a zoom right now you know forget it right um are you going to switch to black ops that's due out soon isn't it yep you excited yep <laughs> actually before black yep. ops uh, yep. medal of honor will be coming out oh and i'll be playing that we'll see how that goes and then obviously black ops and you know one of the things that just came out i think yesterday was black ops 
is made by the team of people who made not not the previous Call of Duty game, but the one before that, the World at War game, the Call of Duty 5. Yeah. That game had that Nazi zombie thing, which was hugely popular, and that will be part of Black Ops. Cool. The new Nazi zombies. SSL and Hotmail. Yep. No, is Did there they no... announce it yet? No. Did they announce it? No, no. so it's wondering. Coming. They're going to they're gonna announce it very soon. Ah, that's good news. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. I'm glad to... <laughs> glad anyway, you yeah, asked. They, they are going to announce it, yeah. Very good. Thank you for all your questions. Our chat room is fantastic. We watch it throughout the day and respond often to questions. And uh, Paul wants to do this uh, on the show from time to time. So we thank you, chat room. Moving along, time for our uh, new feature. We were doing Windows 7 feature of the week. Now we're doing the IE9 feature of the week. Yeah, this one won't go a year because there really aren't that many no. new features, but se several weeks worth, certainly. Good. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, this week's feature of the week is the download manager, which if you've been using any other browser on earth is not news because they've been around for a long time. But for some reason, IE has never had one. So now in IE9, they have one. And it, as expected, it integrates with that new notification bar, which I think we talked about last week, which is great. And it, it works as you would expect. It has pausing and resuming and the ability to run, save, or save as things that you're downloading. It will keep the queue there and all that kind of stuff. You can search downloads. But I think that the big feature that sets the download manager in IE9 apart from the download managers in other browsers is that it integrates with Microsoft's smart screen filter, and it uses a system of reputation that Microsoft is building over time. It's not fully fleshed out in the beta, but the way this is going to work is that based on feedback, kind of like, uh, like they use for the Windows, uh, I'm sorry, for the Microsoft Security Essentials product, they're going to rate certain downloads as to whether the world at large believes them to be malicious or not, so that you'll get some form of a warning that's almost uh, heuristic in, in, in fashion hmm. for certain types of downloads. So um, the way this exposes itself in the beta is occasionally you'll try to download something and my, it will say... Um, you know, we can't uh, verify this, you know, the, the origin of this download or something. And it, it's funny because the times I've seen it, it's actually been a download that I know is okay, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, but uh, it's it good does to happen. see the warning, though. I mean, it, it, it yeah. just means that we haven't verified it, whatever it is. They didn't buy a certificate right. or whatever. Right. So, uh, yeah, not too much to it. But that's, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the big new features in 99. So, um, well, again, I'd love to see kind of yeah. companies that make software uh, start doing certificates or some sort of form of, yeah. uh, of yeah, uh, identity, yeah, exactly. identity verification. That would be fantastic. Maybe yep. this will move us closer to that. Maybe Windows just needs to move to a fully sandbox model well, like Windows Phone. You know, and not you know, a bad thing. I know a lot of people use Sandboxy and other solutions yep. to, to do that. I'm actually kind of surprised that, you know, that we have. And I, I think that, you know, we talk a lot about virtualization and how this is the key to removing a lot of this legacy gunk that's in Windows and that uh, maybe that's the way forward. And maybe, you know, Windows 8 or 9 or something, somewhere down the road we'll have this more sophisticated system where for modern Windows technologies, that's how it actually works, you know, right. if we're lucky. Uh, and uh, from the Windows, or the Internet Explorer feature of the week to our Audible pick of the week, and then we will get our tip of the week and software of the week as well. Audible, okay. that great company that gives you those wonderful audio books. I spend uh, time at the gym. I spend time in the car, and I get so much reading done. I'm loving Audible, and I have for years. Yeah. If you listen to podcasts, you really ought to consider audio books as a way um, to pour something into your brain. A little, a little and entertainment, and a little history, a little sci-fi. There's tons of stuff, and you like those. You, Paul, is a pretty much a thriller slash. <laughs> political junkie you love yeah. you love usually you got one or the other to recommend and right so i've been uh working on this one for a few days now it just just came out this week this is the new bob woodward book oh. uh obama's wars oh. and it's if you're familiar with bob woodward you know how these things work it's uh he gets better access to the people who are really involved with what's going on than anybody um I, you know i don't know if you i don't know if you've ever noticed this i, I i've complained about this to my wife now several times but i i find i always find out that this book is coming out or one of his books is coming out through the book review section in the new york times right me too and so i get excited that it's coming out and then the new york times reviews it and they always complain about this guy they don't like woodward uh, huh they don't like woodward and i i find it to be somewhat transparent right 
because obviously he works, oh, he works for, for a competitor yeah, that's right. uh, of sorts. I mean, not really, right? I mean, I, I don't understand the complaint. You yeah. know, I'm, I, you, it, it would be worth looking up if you're interested in this. Uh, find the, the New York Times review of both this book and his last couple of books about the Bush presidency. And the complaints about the book are always about Woodward. <laughs> you know, it's very strange. I think he's fantastic. I Hey, well, uh, the, the reviews on uh, on Audible are five star, one hundred percent. Yeah, this is a you great know, people book. People love it. I mean, this is, yeah, and it's it's exactly what I was hoping for. I mean, this is still very recent, right? So there's always the chance that there's information that they can't tell you for whatever reason. But I, it's very forthcoming. I mean, it's very very interesting. I would love to find out. This is about Afghanistan and Iraq, of course. Yeah, mostly Afghanistan, uh, actually. But um, yeah, and it, and a lot of it has to do with the transition between the different presidents and how. The new team comes in and they find out what's going on. And a lot of it is, you know, I mean, there's some stuff, you know, so, but seriously, where's Bin Laden? And they're like, no, we really don't know. <laughs> yeah, how could you not know? We, are, we have no idea where he is. No goes. idea. If we knew, you know, it, <laughs> we and they, tell you. Know, you. I don't remember the name of the guy, but, you know, whoever the incoming <laughs> guy, you know, he says, no, but seriously, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Obama's Wars. Now, you, you basically, there's almost 80,000 titles now on uh, audible.com, so you have your pick of a lot of different titles. What we're going to do is give you the first one free. But the challenge is, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll picking just one. So pick one and then listen, and then, you know what? You'll get another one next month and the month after the month after. Just sign up for the gold account. That's a book a month. I'm a platinum guy, two books a month, and believe me, I use them. I love them. Uh, the one thing, you know, the one thing that's changed for me with Audible is th they now have this native application that runs it. on the iPhone or Android. On the iPhone and the Android, love and it. on BlackBerry, I guess. And presume uh, BlackBerry we've heard too. Soon, Sorry, Windows Phone as well. And this really changes the dynamic because uh, I don't know if you're going through iTunes, it's actually not horrible. But if you if you want to sync on the PC between the Audible software and the device, yeah, that's not that's say a, on the Zoom, it's not it's not great. You know, right. it's not it's not a great experience. Um, but this, the Audible native app is fantastic. I I so, just love it. Your whole library is there, and this is one of the things I like about Audible. Oops, I had the uh, USB. Yeah, it works like the Kindle app works, right? right? So you get over the air access to all of your content. So if you if you have one of these devices, and this is how you're going to listen to these things, you know, the iPhone, the iPod Touch, Android, or BlackBerry, apparently, uh, this is the way to go. I wouldn't I wouldn't use the Audible software I would, I, on your PC. I would use the only negative, oh, I still think I'm on USB. There it is. The only negative is that uh, on the iPhone, you know, there's a limit of 20 megabyte downloads over 3G. So you can't download the book unless you're on Wi-Fi. I, of course, that's not a problem on uh, yeah. on uh, Android. But uh, right. my whole life, I have four or 500 books in my uh, library. Yeah, They're all great, on yeah. here. So I can go back and listen to any book. Or, yeah. and, you know, I frequently get it's ahead. Just like the Kindle. So yep. if you're out on the road and you finish something, you, you, you don't have to go it. back to your PC and sync exactly. it up. You can just do it right from there. It's nice. I'm going to do the Stephen King Dark Tower series next, I decided. Oh, so I'll see you in five years. I know. It's quite a few books. <laughs> right now I'm listening to Operation Mincemeat. This is an Andy Anaka recommendation. I just, I have to say, I just love it. And, and yeah, you just, you know, you, 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 you listen uh, in the car, at home, at work, at play. When I'm, I drive carpool three days a week now, I love it. It gives me time to listen. Audible.com slash Windows. Give it a try today. You'll find there are <laughs> plenty of books for anybody's taste. Pick one. The first one's free. Yours to keep forever. You can cancel at any time. Audible. It just, uh, it, it brings reading back. And I just, I think that's a, always a good thing. Let us move along to your tip of the week, my friend. This is kind of an oldie but a goodie, but um, t tied into some information about Windows I'm sorry, I keep calling it. I, w I want to call it Windows Security Essentials. Uh, Microsoft has a free product called Windows Security Essentials. By the way, happy anniversary. It's his one-year birthday today. Right. So Microsoft announced today that they've had over 30 million installs. They've wow. detected over 400 million uh, software threats and so forth. So wow. um, I had this, I think it's, this must be in the, I think it's in the Windows 7 Secrets book. But, you know, it's the two-step guide to securing your PC. Because, you know, there's a lot of misinformation about there, but all the, you know, junk you have to do to make sure you your Windows computer is secure, but actually, I think combined with you know some common sense, you really don't have to do too much. You know, number one would be just to enable automatic updates, right? Make sure that your computer is uh, updating itself. You can optionally set it up so it doesn't automatically re reboot, as we've discussed in the past. I mean, that's certainly something you should consider. 
And then the second one would be to download and install Microsoft Security Essentials, which I've found to be excellent. And I can say now, you know, here we are a year later. I've, I've put this on all of my PCs. My kids use it. My wife use it. And I routinely will go and check out on my kids' computers, see what's going on there. And, you know, the, my kids, they're not brain damaged or anything, but they're not exactly savvy to the web or to the Internet and to real life and all that stuff. And they've never been, uh, you know, hacked in any way or have had any problems. So it's always worked out great for us. And I, I have a feeling, because sometime in October... Microsoft is going to allow very small businesses to install the software for free as well. Uh, businesses with 10 or fewer computers. So I have a feeling that the second version of Microsoft Security Essentials is probably going to ship in October. I'm guessing that those two things are tied together. Otherwise, why make them wait? You know, why would you announce that at some vague time in the future, we're going to let you download this for free? Well, what's stopping you from doing it right now? I mean, what's the difference? Um, I suspect that there is a second, you know, the second version, which is currently in beta, uh -huh. is coming down the pike. But anyway, whichever version you use, uh, I have a mix of both, actually. Um, it, it works great, and it stays out of the way, which is exactly what you're looking for. You're not a, a lot of stupid alerts like one care used to have. Uh, hey, we just stopped something bad from happening. You know, thanks. Just wanted to let you know. You know, those stupid little slide-up toast things you used to get all the time. So <laughs> it's a great little solution. It's really simple, and it works really well. And finally, our software pick of the week. I guess it's really no surprise what it would be. <laughs> yeah. We telegraphed this one a little bit. Yep. Uh, Windows Live Essentials 2011 is now available, right? And this is the new versions of Mail and Messenger, Writer, Movie Maker, um, many other things. Windows Live Mesh, as we discussed, and all that stuff. So I, in only a little bit of testing here today, I, I don't see any dramatic differences between this version and the in that previous beta, which makes sense, as you, I'm sure, as you would expect. But um, this is it's solid, and along with window with my, <laughs> I, I keep wanting to call it that. Along with Microsoft Security Essentials, yes. To me, these are the things that complete Windows Seven. You know, when you install Windows Seven, the next thing you do is install Security Essentials and then Live Essentials, and that's to me that's Windows. You know, I think that's the complete picture right there. That's why they're essential. That's why they are essential, Leo. It does beg the question, why don't they put it on the damn disk? But I honestly think that this is a leftover from the antitrust days, and yeah. I think we're, headed, we're heading in that direction. They're careful. They, don't, they just want to be careful. Yeah. It's too bad. They may be legally not required. They may not be able to do it. Yeah. You know, because of the settlements they've made. And I, I think it's a minor uh, hassle. In fact, I kind of... Well, it's see, silly. This, it, I don't it's, worry about people like you and me, because uh, we have a standard thing set of things we download every time we yeah. install a new Windows yeah. anyway. Yeah, but you worry about your parents and your yeah. brother, sister, and people. You, know, yeah, you have to explain people. this to people on the radio show all the time. It's it's something that it, it shouldn't be that way, but it is. I can understand why you wouldn't do the security program because, you know, Norton and McAfee, now Intel. <laughs> I don't like know. <laughs> I mean, I, I still, I, I, I really feel that that should be part of Windows. And honestly, at the very most... I could picture some sort of a ballot screen like they have in Europe for the browser for security programs. Um, but there's plenty of good free security out there. If, if for some reason you're not interested in Microsoft's program, right, this Panda antivirus, which is also very good, and some others. I mean, there's other uh, choices. So I, I don't understand. I, I think it should just be part of Windows. I really you know, don't. It's, some, it's interesting because um, I'm looking at the Windows Live blog post um, mm -hmm. by Chris Jones, and he says Dell's going to ship with it pre-installed. So, yeah, I, yeah. Through, you know, OEMs sure. can do it, and that makes sense, right. maybe. You right. know? Yeah, actually, there was a, a part of the micro, the, <laughs> yeah, the Microsoft, I said it right, and I screwed myself up. The uh, Microsoft <laughs> Security Essentials product is also being shipped on various PCs, including now some HP laptops, like the Envy laptops, as they should be. The difference would be that Symantec, I'm sure, pays money to HP or yep. anybody yep. if you put Norton on there. I'm sure Microsoft doesn't pay them. Uh, maybe. Well, actually, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> maybe they do. Do you think? I mean, yeah. Like give, yeah. them, give them a buck off or something? Sure. Yeah, I think that's how it would work. Uh, in fact, I, I'm i almost positive that's exactly how it works. You know, where you get a, uh, the more stuff you put on, the less you pay for Windows, maybe. Hmm. An interesting end run around the requirements. IE9, or 8, I guess in this case, is is part of the default install, though, right? Yes. Yeah, you have to have a browser. It's, right. It's my favorite browser for downloading my other browser. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what most of us use it for. 
IE9, the, the browser we use. It should just go to, to google.com slash chrome, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the homepage. <laughs> yeah. Paul Therott is the editor-in-chief of the Super Site for Windows Win, Supersite.com. He's news editor of Windows IT Pro. And, of course, his new book is due out. So you, 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 are you going to come out on mm -hmm. November uh, 8th or for the, with yeah, the book? Yeah, it will be out before then. Yeah. Ahead of the Windows Phone yep. 7. Yeah. yeah, it should be out at very end of October, very early November. Right, so yeah. buy the book, and then when you get the phone, you'll be ready for it. Study it's up. All, it's it's uh, it's on sale on Amazon.com. Windows Phone Secrets. Look for it. And, of course, Windows Vista and Windows 7 Secrets as well. Paul, thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. We've got a puppet going to be on the show. <laughs> That's right. I wanted Palpatine, but I guess we had to settle. <laughs> You'll do Palpatine. Last pop. He could have he could have Walt and Palpatine fighting. I would enjoy that. And then I'll bring out my puppet. Brian my, made my puppet. Did you see the one where he killed Steve Ballmer? <laughs> No, it's actually yet. quite funny. <laughs> Maybe he'll reenact that. <laughs> Complete with felt blood. <laughs> it's a lot like Sesame Street, but... For grown-ups. Way more violent. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's put it this way. Katy Perry is on this one. All right, sir. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Let's see here. I figured we could all get on Call of Duty together and... There you go. Help Paul get those last few challenges that are eluding him oh i thought you were prestige 11 and all of that that's prestige as you can get that's what i thought but you have you know individual uh, challenges there were some hard there are some hard ones we drop a knows, crate I, on someone drop a crate on someone that's a challenge yeah a plane comes in drops a crate so it gives you some stuff but sometimes if there's a bad guy in there it'll hit him and then you actually get a challenge for that like you get like a, a, a badge or something it goes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know... I have not done this. I have killed people on my own team with crates by mistake. Really? <laughs> Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. He's leveled up once again. It is the sound I hear in my sleep. You just clobbered somebody with a crate. <laughs> Congratulations.